My name is Judith. I was named for Montana's Judith River, which flows a few miles west of here. I lived and died in this very place, 75 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period. But this is not a story about my death. It is a story of a discovery. The discovery of me, Judith, the dinosaur. My world was very different from the scene before you. Dr. Bill Shipp, the man who first discovered me, said it best. It was difficult to understand what this countryside looked like 75 million years ago today as you look across it. But actually what was happening is the ocean was still receding. Uh, the shoreline was probably a few miles from the east of here. This area itself was a low marshy area with meandering streams that frequently flooded, probably had a number of oxbow lakes associated with it as well. There were frequent volcanic actions associated with the Rockies as well that was depositing ash into the water, creating bentonite and creating the mudstone that you see around us in the hillsides here. Judith. In fact, Judith died among quite a lot of vegetative material, tree trunks, tree limbs that we could clearly see the identity of as we excavated her. And then subsequently her bones were covered with the bentonite and the mudstone that you see. That is, that is what preserved her bones in such a marvelous kind of condition. Many geologic changes took place as the late Cretaceous period moved forward. The great inland sea that divided the continent grew and shrank. Rivers deposited mud and silt. Volcanoes spewed ash. Layer upon layer deposits built up, becoming rock over the millions of years that followed. While all this was happening, I lived and died. My bones were scattered by scavengers and covered by a layer of mud and ash. During millions of years of burial, my bones became mineralized and I became part of the Judith River formation. Until erosion, more than 75 million years later, began to reveal my fossilized bones. Can you spot my leg bone protruding from the ground? This bone was Dr. Ship's first view of my fossil. In 2005, a few large bones were removed from the hillside, enough to encourage Dr. Ship to continue. The next summer, Joe Small came to Paradise Point Ranch to manage the dig. Joe's avocation is paleontology, and he has spent decades honing his craft. He brought with him a team of experienced diggers and an apprentice or two. At the beginning, the group had to cling to the side of the hill as they worked to uncover my bones and remove areas of the hillside. Those special flags show where additional bones were visible. Excitement grew as the crew began to uncover what would be a major find. To ease the recovery work, Dr. Ship arranged for large equipment to be used for removing portions of the hillside above the dig. Once revealed, the crew stabilized my bones with plaster of Paris bandages. Only then could they dig underneath and safely remove whole sections at a time. Each section was carefully labeled and stored in a dry place. And because my fossilized bones were so unique, Dr. Ship decided to have a cast made of my head. Please meet Sandy and Ed Gerken, owners of White River Preparium. They spent two years gently cleaning my bones with tiny sandblasting equipment. The detail and quality of my fossil was astounding. Next, the professional paleontologists at the Black Hills Institute of Geologic Research began to assemble and cast my bones. Keep in mind, my bones had been scattered around a bit. Luckily though, the bones of my skull and frill remained close to one another. Black Hills used related fossils to fill in the gaps where my bone was missing. 
and after making a mold, they cast my entire head. I am proud to say that I appear to be unique among Ceratopsian dinosaurs. Unlike other horned-faced dinosaurs of my era, my neck frill is a bit more decorative than most. Each of the little bumps around the edges of my frill would have been a small horn. The individual bones of my upper beak are naturally fused together for strength. And while many small details set me apart from my contemporaries, my sideways pointing brow horns help to distinguish my species from others. They resemble a pair of horns collected and cataloged for the Smithsonian in 1888, long before scientists had a good working knowledge of dinosaurs. And even though I am 75 million years old, my journey has just begun. Because of my unique features, I will advance the science of paleontology for many years to come.